Hello. How's everybody doing? Welcome to Monday night. All right. Let me pull up my feeds. Um, how was your weekend? Oh, I, my name is Darlene. <laughs> I should probably introduce myself. My name is Darlene. I am with Featherweight Doctor here in beautiful Sandpoint, Idaho. I own and operate Featherweight or Sand Creek Quilting, home of Featherweight Doctor. Uh, today is one of our days closed. Um, so I've actually been here this afternoon just working, working on a service machine um, and having a nice quiet, some nice quiet time because I'm not being interrupted every few minutes. Um, tonight's discussion is uh, called Ask the Doctor, which means that I am literally answering viewer questions. The question was posed actually during last week's Monday Live and um, the, the specific uh, question that we're going to address tonight is regarding uh, changing out the grease in the motor, why you wanna do that, how often you wanna do that, how to inspect your carbon brushes properly, um, we also have some other just housekeeping items for the tribe. So let's, uh, let me just say hi to a few friends. If you just indulge me for a few minutes and then we will get started. So let me start here at the top of the list. I think Angel is on. Yes, Lisa's on from Phoenix. Hello. Oh, Angel says crazy rain here. That's not good in Houston. My mom is in Texas and she said they're expecting some tornado, tornado warnings. Hello, Linda Wood. Kim's on from Manitoba. Debbie's on from Kentucky. Pauline's on from Texas. Polly's on from UK. I did have a good weekend. Um, last night did not exactly go how I wanted it to. We had a bunch of friends over and I was supposed to be making Cuban sandwiches and I had started my 10 pound pork shoulder first thing in the morning, like 7 a.m., thinking that it would be about a 10 hour smoke. I needed it done around five. Well, it was a 14 hour smoke. So I had to come up with plan B and we ended up ordering pizza. So needless to say, we are definitely having Cubanos for dinner tonight because I have got so much food. So, <laughs> but other than that, it was a good weekend. Other than that, Linda's on from Tennessee. Mel and Joe are there from Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. Odie's on. Hi, Odie. Kathy Zoka. Uh, is over in Addie, Washington. Becky's on from Kennedale, Texas. Nancy's on from Lake Stevens, Washington. Franny's on from Abilene, Kansas. Elizabeth, <gasps> Elizabeth, what? Elizabeth Sowers is usually in Indiana and today she's in Niagara Falls. Must be vacation, I hope. Sounds fun. Kathy's on from SoCal. Bernadette's on from Canada. Uh, charge for all what to work. How much do I charge for all that work? For the servicing of a machine? Is that what you're talking about? Um, let's see. Debbie Allen says, what part of Texas? Oh, oh where'd it go? What part? Uh, 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 my parents are in Dallas, outside of Dallas. So that's where, but, but she, Angel's down in Houston, and she said they're getting buckets of rain. Buckets. Hi, Denise. Oh, the motor work is part of our service on our motor. So... It's, there's not an actual cost to just servicing the motor. It's just part of the whole thing. Let's see. Carrie's on from Germany. Hello. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Pizza gods for saving the day. Absolutely. Talk about, it was so embarrassing, you guys. This couple that was coming over for dinner has made us these fantastic homemade meals multiple times. This was my way of kind of thanking them, um, reciprocating the generosity. And so I was planning on making this like Puerto Rican Cuban feast and I called it for takeout. <laughs> Keeps me humble, I guess. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Sandy Reese is on. Oh, back in New Hampshire. Nice. Dee -dee -dee. Let's see. Uh, so tonight, what? Oh, so let's see. Oh no, you're on in Kennedale, Texas. You're under severe thunderstorms right now too. Jeez, y'all be careful. Everybody be careful out there. So I'm hoping I don't have a problem with the broadcast tonight. I do not know what is going on with my with my internet connection here at the office. It's supposed to be fantastic, and apparently it's only fantastic every once in a while. So Sunny's on. Hello, hello. 
<laughs> Lisa. <laughs> Thanks. She's making me feel better. She says nothing wrong with a good pizza. And it was really good pizza. And we have a lot left over. <laughs> Hello, other mom in Phoenix. Hope you are well. All right. So tonight, um, so last week we did uh, an in-depth demonstration on removing the old grease from your motor. How, how much is is the right amount to put new grease back on your motor. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to talk about servicing the, or the gears. I'm sorry, how much is the right amount to put grease back on the gears? Tonight we are talking about the motor. Um, there was a, I think it was Judy Colby who said it uh, on last Monday. She said, uh, I'd love to see, you know, the in-depth um, demonstration on how to take care of your motor. So we're going to talk about that. Um, so I'm going to switch cameras here. Let me, okay, let me do that. And then I'm going to do this and okay. All right. So here is the back of a motor that I am servicing and oops. And you can see here, this is actually an amazingly immaculate machine that's in for service. The belt is very clearly past its shelf life. There's a big like cut in it where it's separating. I don't see it right this second, but oh, there it is. It's right here, it's starting to separate. Anyway, oh, and there's another one. So anyway, um, I am to the motor part and we need to talk about how to take the grease out of the motor. So I guess let me just start at the beginning here. Okay, so grease needs to be changed every year. Um, whether the machine is used once that year or once a month, you need to annually change out the grease um, in your motor. The reason why is the grease, the right grease, which there is only a half a handful, I said this on last week's show, um, half a handful of companies across the country that make the right amount of grease, the right viscosity or melting point. This is our grease. We are one of those companies. Um, it can be, you know, purchased on our website, featherweightdoctor.com. Um, the reason why grease, especially when it comes to motor care, is important is you first of all have to have the right grease. If you get a vintage grease tube with your machine, do not use that grease on your motor. It is past its shelf life. It's not it's not gonna lubricate and, and melt at the correct um, melting point. So you do not wanna use that. Buy new grease that is specifically formulated for your vintage machine. Oh, <laughs> Carrie, you'll have to tune in. We do shows three times a week and we talk about featherweight care, well, for at least two shows of the week. The Friday night show at four o'clock Pacific time here in the, in the U.S. is, um, it's called the Sippin'. So we just basically have fun as, as an online tribe. So you are welcome to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at four o'clock Pacific Standard Time. What is on, what is the shelf life on your, oh, I, 10 years, I would say our, our, our you will, you'll use the grease in the tube before the end of the expiration date. Some of the grease that comes from Singer is almost 90 years old. And that's the other thing. Don't go to a sew and back and buy just Singer brand grease. They are for the modern machines, not the vintage machines. Yeah, shelf life on the new gre grease is, is 10 years easily. It might even be longer. Okay, so when you buy grease from us, you get a little red straw that looks like this. You actually get two of them. These are from the dollar store. What they are are the inexpensive Q-tips that you can cut off both the ends, the fuzzy um, cotton ball ends. And this is the inside. It's just a clear, or, or it's a little, little tiny baby straw. The first thing you're gonna do is you're going to take the grease. Oh, good. Oh, great. Yes, I saw that order come through. Yes, you did. Um, okay, so you're gonna take the little straw and let me go to the machine thing here. Oh, boop, 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 boop. Hold on, maybe I can do this. Deep, 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 there. Ah, there we go. Okay, so you can take the straw and you're going to poke it into the holes. Um, there's a port on the top of the motor. 
Now, if you have a white machine from the later 60s, you have a closed motor, you won't have ports. And then there's one on the front. So there's two oil grease ports right here, one there and one there. This is the removing tool. This tool is for taking the old grease out. Then you're going to use the tip of the dental syringe and you are going to poke it into the hole. Don't completely seat it down because you need to keep squeezing and topping it off until the moat until it starts working its way back out like that. And we're not sloppy technicians, so we're gonna clean up our little mess here. Same with the top of the thing, just till it starts working its way out. So that's done. Now the other thing you wanna check, and this is really important information, is you wanna just do a quick inspection on your motor uh, brush, carbon brushes. So you have a brush on the top, and there's actually one on the bottom in that hole. And this is really important. This is a plastic screw cap. They break. It's not a big deal. We carry more of them. Don't panic. But you never want to do anything less than or more than finger tight. Sometimes you have to use a screwdriver to get it started. But then you want to use your fingers. They're pretty uh, fragile is the word because they're old. So just be careful with the motor caps. Again, we we carry these, so if you break it, it's not a big deal. Then you're going to, now, okay, real quick, before we pull this up, I want you to look here. There's a shaft running through the motor like this. This is the end of the shaft where the pulley is. So you have your shaft running through the motor like this. So this carbon brush sits on the motor shaft, and there it as it wears the carbon down, it creates kind of like this concave kind of look. Um, like this. So when you go to pull this up, this, the spring up, it's very important that you put it right back down the same way it comes off because you want it seated on the shaft like this, not like this. It has to make complete contact with the shaft in order to have a good electrical connection in the machine. So you want, when you pull up the motor shaft, you want to see, or the carbon brush, I'm sorry, you want to make sure that you have at least a quarter inch of carbon brush left on your brush. We also do resell replacement brushes, so that is not a big deal. Um, if they're less than a quarter of an inch, you need new carbon brushes. And I always just check the top because as a technician, I would never change the top and and not change the bottom at the same time. So you can you can just do a quick inspection from the top again, making sure it comes out the same way that it goes back down. Okay, so carbon brushes are inexpensive. I think they're under ten dollars for a set. The cap is under ten dollars. All this motor care does is it promotes the longevity of your motor. Hi, Donna. Thanks for joining us. Um, if your yes, the plastic does get a get a little brittle, uh, Lisa Meadows. So if your um, there is some instances like since Donna just jumped on, she just reminded me, the 222's motor port is shallower on the top if you have the 222 model featherweight versus the 221. And some of them, the port holes are not all consistently the same size. I'd say 95% of them will fit this little straw here, but every once in a while I find one that doesn't. And the only thing you can do at that point is use one of your sewing pins and kind of put it in and swirl it around and pull, hi Judy P, pull out what you can with just fishing it out with a sewing needle. Now, if you are lubricating your motor and you go to put that straw down into the, uh, the ports and nothing comes out. So basically your machine was dry. Uh, Kathy Zoka, probably not very often. Like I inspect it cause I know you purchased the machine for me. So your carbon brushes were inspected when they left my shop. 
So I know yours are good for a very long time. Um, every once in a while, you'll know they need to be replaced when you could be receiving a shock if the, if the metal to the metal after the carbon has totally gone away is down, you could um, have like a short in the motor so it will just stop running and then it'll start running because it'll get enough carbon contact and then it'll stop. So you have to have, you'll have to have some kind of a sign that maybe you should check your carbon brushes. But honestly, if you're new to your machine, I don't see any harm in just doing the inspection. Um, Anyway, so every once in a while, if your motor was dry, dry, I'll, I, Elizabeth, I see your question about the pups. I'll give you an update. Um, then I would do the top off of the grease routine, run it pretty good for a, a month, and then take out the old grease, put in the new grease. Um, I would do that after about 30 days just to make sure that it's well lubricated. There's probably a lot of carbon floating around in there. If it was dry, dry, and you want to make sure that you have proper lubrication to keep your your motor running in good condition and in the event with donna who just popped on she was in my class on saturday donna had a her featherweight sat so long that her grease had congealed hard and what we're what i told her to do in that case is to take the sewing pins poke a couple holes thank you poke a couple holes in through the hard pack of the hardened grease. And this is the only time I will ever tell you to do this. Drop one drop of oil. Only time I will ever tell you to do this. One drop of oil into that hardened port and then top it off with the, with the new grease and the oil will help pull the new grease through and soften that hard pack. So Carrie, the, if you bought grease from me, the straws will come with the grease. I don't know in Germany if you have uh, like, it's basically the cheapest type of cotton swab or Q-tip you can buy. It's not made, the brand is not Q-tip. I buy the cheapest Q-tips at the dollar store called Dollar Tree here in the US. And then I cut off the cotton ends and it's a little baby straw. Um, let's see. So. Gwen says, I have sliced the straw to be able to compress. Oh yeah, that, that might, oh, that's actually a really good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea, Gwen, to slice it a little bit and then it will feed into the hole. Um, and then Lisa wants to know about the second quilt camp payment. Second quilt camp payment is due April 18th, 45 days before the retreat. I do have a spot or two open, by the way. We had some people have to cancel. And so if you have put off, um, have put off signing up, there are now two spots open in Quilt Camp. So go ahead and contact me and I can get you in. So we, we thought we were full, we thought it was closed, but now there's two spots open. Um, so the puppies are doing good. Luna is not- Land shark. <laughs> we just said land shark. Luna has not taken to the potty training, um, potty training as I would have hoped. She is having pretty regular uh, accidents in her crate, um, even despite the fact she gets taken out. <laughs> Sandy Reese, you know you want to come see me. Talk to Jim. I'll talk to Jim. Well, that way you're guaranteed to service your machines um, if you're here at Quilt Camp. Uh, anyway, so we've, we're, we're having to kind of go back to our puppy books and brush up on our puppy skills to try and get her through this. It's really more just my sanity. She's doing great other than that. She she definitely has entered the velociraptor phase where she's just snap, 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 snapping at everything. Um, <laughs> she is the epitome of cute though. So it's easy to like, you know, to let it go a, a tiny bit. But she's 13 weeks on Wednesday. Um, we are going to start some obedience training um, with her this week because she is now old enough to, to, to absorb and, and keep the information. But Rogue is, yeah, I've there. Yeah. Missy says, make her kennel smaller. It's not that she does not mind sitting in her own filth. That's what the, I've never met another dog that is totally fine with laying in her own filth, but Luna is, it's not, it's a, it's a rare, uh, it's a rarity. So we're, we're just, uh, having some challenges. 
Yes, yeah, she. I have taken her to the vet, and she is medically fine. She just doesn't mind sitting in her own filth. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> She'll be fine. She'll be fine. That's what I keep telling myself. Anyway, what was I saying? Uh, I lost. Oh, no. I lost my train of thought. Okay. Well, that must mean that I'm done talking. Uh, <laughs> I will uh, be back on Wednesday. Oh yeah, I'm well. They yes, that, I actually have spoken with a trainer, and she told me that it was such a low percentage of the dog population that is willing to sit in their own filth, and I am the lucky winner of that dog. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mel. That was the other thing. Okay. <laughs> thank you for being my brain tonight. So, I. Well, Jen, Jen, I haven't put it past you at this point. So not even going to, not even going to read that. <laughs> Hi, Greta. Thanks for joining us. All right. So it has been brought to my attention that some people in the tribe want to get together as a tribe and do some project, do something with our, our, our gifts and our talents of quilt making and block making to do something for Ukraine relief. And although I am overwhelmed with this season of my life in the store and all of the things, um, there has been some people who want to step up and kind of help coordinate what that looks like. So what I would like to do is just tonight anyway, is open the conversation, see if anybody else would like to contribute through um, helping to coordinate. So I think what, what we've been discussing is the idea of all of doing like some small quilts and selling them to be able to donate um, money to like Ukraine relief um, in the form of like a 501c3 nonprofit um, <laughs> post COVID brain. I think so. I think that's it. So, um, anyway, Mel out in Bay St. Louis is one of the people who have offered to help kind of coordinate things. Odie also has, uh, has offered to help coordinate some aspects of this. So I, I'm thinking if you could do blocks, um, in green or blue colors, we would have to come up with like a, let's call it an eight and a half inch square. I know a lot of people have that AccuQuilt cutter and the eight and a half inch cube, do some blue and, and yellow blocks. And, you know, Mel has offered to help assemble. Um, we could have someone who, people who have long arms, um, they could do some quilting anyway. I, we want to see as a community, as an, and as a tribe, if there's any interest in doing this, um, from the featherweight community. So I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, Mel, uh, I want to thank you for bringing it to me. Um, and I also want to thank you for helping to run with part of it. Cause I, I just, <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, what it was the, Oh, Gwen says, is there any situation where you have to do more to the motor when you, when would you need any more of the motor? Okay, so actually that's a good question, Gwen, um, to bring us back to our, our, our video here. Um, the, when you would need to do more to the motor is if you had, so like Donna on the class on Saturday had one port on her 222 that was clogged like hard, hard pack with grease, but one was open. So in that case, I don't think she needed to do anything else with the motor. If your motor has two hard packed, compacted motor ports, so you can't really get any good grease down to it efficiently, then I think that the motor needs to be sent to my motor guy, who also happens to be dad-in-law, in Phoenix and have him crack it and do a complete clean out of the motor. If the, mo if the motor is shocking you through the machine, that's something that needs to go to a motor technician. Um, I would never, ever recommend that the average end user or operator of a featherweight crack their motor. That is a, that has to be someone that knows what they're doing. I have tried to crack a motor and I did not get it back together and I kind of know what I'm doing. So that would be the only instance where it would need to go in for more um, 
specialized care, as long as you're doing your, um, your grease and cleaning out regularly, if you're using your machine often, like I'd say more than once a week, then I think you need to do the motor uh, lubrication service um, every six months. If you're just using it once a month or for quilting retreats only twice a year, once a year is totally fine. Let's see here. Uh, Kiri says, I'm getting a new foot pedal. I'm having trouble having a hard time with a little knob, I guess. Oh, <laughs> Yes. So the new controller is much easier to, um, to use because it's a, an electric clamshell style. Okay. So Mel says, I'm in, of course, I'm willing to piece it all together. Just need a long armor to quilt it. Great. Um, and then Becky said, I'd love to help with sewing blocks together. Give Mel and Odie my number. Are y'all thinking a variety of blocks? Yeah. First, yes. That's what I think is a good idea. Fabulous. When I start to use one of the machines, it Yes, the machine will start slower usually until the machine comes up to speed. And then when it gets to the peak operating temperature, which causes that grease to, to solidify, not solidify, to, to desolidify and lubricate properly, the motor should speed up. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Polly in UK says, great idea. Now we've been looming knit blankets, hood scarves for Ukraine. That's really cool. It's easy to tell when, is it easy to, yes, it is easy to tell. That's a great question, Elizabeth. So you know that your port is clogged when you, when you push this little straw, I don't see what I did with my little straw right now. When you push the little straw down in the port, it should feel kind of bouncy because you're literally hitting the wick and then bouncing back up. If it just is hard and doesn't have any movement at all, it means that the port is probably clogged, closed. Okay, run out and cut pieces and mail out too. Okay, let's do this with the Ukraine project. Let's, I will, I'm not, I can coordinate, but that's about it. So if you are interested at all in any form, making blocks, putting quilts together, like, or doing the long arming, email me. So email me info, I-N-F-O at featherweightdoctor.com. And then just explain where you might, you know, help in the, in the equation of making the quilt. And then we'll go from there. How does that sound? So I know I've got, uh, Becky is interested in Kennedale, Mel in Mississippi and Odie in Oregon is interested in helping. Let's Everybody else who hears this in the next couple of weeks, feel free to email me and we will, um, we will see what we can do. I, I feel like it's important. We are all talented workers. We are, we have a specialized gift. Not everybody can do what we can do. And I think that it's really important just in the grand scheme of things that we give back to our communities, our local communities, the international communities and bless people with how we were created and what we're good at. So I think that's, I think that's pretty cool. So <clears throat> I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I will be back on Wednesday for work in progress Wednesday. I will be, let's see, um, four o'clock Pacific. Send your, your finished or works in progress, uh, projects to info I N F O at featherweightdoctor.com quilt to be auctioned off. Yeah, I think that's what we have to decide as I think instead of opening up how we would generate the money to the whole group, I'll, I'll I want to open the discussion to the people who want to lend a hand with it. I'm perfectly, perfectly willing just to sell them in the store for, you know, 100% um, profit, but there might be a, a better platform for being able to get more bidders than right here in tiny little Sandpoint, Idaho. So we'll have to, oh, there are organizations that are sending the quilts directly to the refugees. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. See, these are all, these are all good pieces of information. All right. All right, guys. Well, thanks for starting the discussion with me. I'm sure there'll be more on this as the weeks go on. But if you're interested at all in helping, then go ahead and email me and we'll see what we can do. Thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks for joining us, Carrie, in Germany. I appreciate you. 
uh, from so far away contributing to the to the conversation. Ah, my pleasure, Elizabeth. My pleasure. Uh, let's see. Carrie says I'm doing a block for someone through Facebook. Those poor people we sip. I know. I, I know. I totally agree with you. We need to do what we can do. Oh, is that one of the organizations, Kathy in SoCal sending uh, quilts directly to? All right, let's keep the conversation going. 